Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the furthest planet in our solar system, and that is the planet Uranus. It's an ice giant way out there, far away from the sun. It's a very interesting planet. It has some very interesting features and attributes to it. It's a bit difficult to find in our nighttime sky because it is so far away and does not reflect very much of the sunlight back to us, but it is still possible to do that. So I'm going to show you how to do it, and then we'll take a look at it up close. We'll fly out and visit and take a look at some of those interesting features of this ice giant on the edges of our solar system. So let's jump right in. So here we are standing in front of the CERN Earth and Space Center at Triton College in River Grove, Illinois. We have our date set to December 18th and our time set to 7 o'clock at night. So just a few hours after the sun sets, it'll be nice and dark and you can take a look around. But what we're looking for, the planet Uranus, is going to be very difficult to find. Even if you have the darkest skies you could find around Chicagoland, you're really not going to be able to see it with just your eyes. You're going to need a telescope and you're going to need to know pretty much right where you need to look to find it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you figure out where that is. We're going to start by facing towards the west, looking at the Eastern and Earth and Space Center. Over here towards the southwest, we can see the moon just starting to set, getting closer to the horizon. And if we turn, we will see Mars a little bit higher up in the sky from the moon. Now that is important. We can use those two objects to help us narrow down what we're looking for because all of the planets and the moon and the sun, they all sit on one line traveling through the sky. It's a bit wider than just a single line, but it's called the ecliptic and it's the path that everything takes throughout our nighttime skies. It's the plane of our solar system. And I can bring up a diagram of that line. So let me bring up our ecliptic line here. And we can see that line, the moon is just off of it there. Mars is just a little bit higher above it. And if we could see the other planets right now, they would be along it as well, as well as the sun. So we can use that line between the moon and Mars to help us kind of get a better idea of where we're looking for the planet Uranus in the sky. I'm also going to turn on our planet labels so we can get a better view. Now, the problem is that we have a lot of light pollution around Chicago, so it's pretty hard to see even the bright things around here. But if you really take a look, you might be able to see it, but I can make it a little bit easier for us by turning off the atmosphere. So it'll get rid of all of that light pollution. We'll see a lot more stars. And then we see Uranus jumping out right along that ecliptic line as well. So Uranus is just going to be a little bit further towards the east of Mars, almost directly up in the sky on December 18th about as close as it's going to get to directly up in the sky. And if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see it's just that little tiny greenish dot along the ecliptic line. Now Mars, as you can see, is a much smaller planet, but it is much brighter in our skies because it's so much closer and it reflects so much more sunlight towards us. So if you're looking for Uranus, you're really going to need a pretty powerful telescope to find it. And if you do have a nice telescope, even then... When we look at it, it's not going to look too spectacular. You won't see like the rings of Saturn or the clouded bands that you see in Jupiter's atmosphere. It'll be just a slightly larger bluish green looking dot in the sky. But it is still very cool to look at. If you get some really, really dark skies, you can get some really cool images of Uranus. It's fun to kind of try and find all of the planets in the sky. But we don't need to settle for just taking a look through our telescope. We can actually fly out and take a quick look at this planet. So let's switch over to our solar system simulator and do that now. So as we begin our flight out to Uranus from the planet Earth, I do want to point out that Uranus is the first planet in our solar system to be discovered by a telescope. It was discovered in 1781 by William Herschel, and he originally thought that it was either a comet or a star, but then figured out that it was actually a planet due to calculating its orbits. Now, Uranus is a very interesting planet. It is very large, about four times wider than the Earth. So when we fly out there, you'll see it does look pretty big 
Um, and it's also very bluish looking, which is very interesting. It's a giant planet, much like Jupiter and Saturn are. But instead of being a just a gas giant like those two planets, it is what we call an ice giant. Uh, most of its mass comes from a dense fluid of icy materials such as water and methane. And it's that methane in in conjunction with the hydrogen and helium that's in its atmosphere that gives it this nice blue color that we can see here. So that methane in its atmosphere gives us this really striking color that we can see. Oh, Uranus has 27 moons that we know about so far, and it does have rings as well, just like Saturn does and Jupiter and Neptune. But Uranus rings are like Jupiter and Neptune's in that they're made of dirt and dust particles rather than ice. So they're a little bit harder to see, definitely not as brilliant as the rings of Saturn. Now, one really cool thing about Uranus that we can kind of see from the way those rings are oriented is that Uranus actually spins on its side. It orbits around the sun along with all of the other planets in that ecliptic plane, but it's revolutions happen kind of pointing its poles towards the sun. And I can bring on its equator and a pole line so we can see that, there we go, the north and south pole is pointing almost directly at the sun. Its equator is on the side, as we would think of it here. And that big tilt gives it some really weird seasons. Uh, it actually has 21 years of nighttime in winter, 21 years of daytime in summer, and then 42 years of day and night in the spring and fall. Now, its years are very, very long because it is very far away from the sun, um, but it is a very interesting planet. Now, as we saw, it is rather hard to find in the sky if you're here on Earth with just a backyard telescope, but it can be done, and I think it's really worth it because you can get some nice pictures of that bluish dot in the sky. So definitely get out there and take a look at that. Well, thank you everyone for taking a look at the planet Uranus with me. Again, my name is Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center here at Triton College. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe to keep getting notifications for our new content that comes out. But remember, the most important thing is to get out there and take a look at your night skies.